Hello everyone, and welcome to another video on Red Dead Redemption 2. Today, we are going to talk about more choices you can make in Red Dead Redemption 2, and what are the best possible choices. This is part 2 of the first video, which you can watch by clicking on the link in the description. Now let's start. To start, I'm going to talk about one of the most interesting missions in Red Dead Redemption 2, Preaching Forgiveness as He Went. In this mission, Arthur and Lenny are fighting the Lemoyne Raiders a group of former Confederate soldiers who are also weapons dealers. Arthur and Lenny have a chance to rob them of their weapons and money, but they have to make a crucial decision. Shoot the dynamite wagon or send Lenny to distract the raiders. So, which option is better? First, let's talk about shooting the dynamite. This option is more straightforward and explosive. You can use a long scoped rifle to aim for the dynamite wagon and blow it up, killing several raiders in the process. This will also trigger the gold medal requirement for this mission, which is to kill 10 Lemoyne Raiders with a long scoped rifle. Shooting the dynamite will also give you an advantage in the ensuing gunfight, as you will have fewer enemies to deal with and more cover to use. However, shooting the dynamite also has some drawbacks. For one thing, it will alert the Raiders immediately, so you won't have much time to prepare or plan your attack. For another thing, it will also destroy some of the weapons and money that you came to steal so you will get less loot from this mission. Finally, shooting the dynamite will also affect the story and the relationship between Arthur and Lenny. Lenny will be disappointed that you didn't trust him to handle the situation, and he will say that you always think you know better than him. This will make Arthur feel guilty and apologize to Lenny, saying that he was just trying to protect him. Lenny will accept the apology, but he will also say that he can take care of himself. This will show that Lenny is growing more independent and confident, but also that he feels a bit resentful towards Arthur for being overprotective. Now, let's talk about sending Lenny. This option is more stealthy and risky. You can send Lenny to the front gate of the raider's camp, where he will pretend to be a lost traveler and ask for directions. This will lure some of the raiders out of their positions and make them cluster around Lenny. Then, you can either shoot the dynamite wagon yourself, or snipe the raiders one by one. Sending Lenny will also give you some benefits in this mission. For one thing, it will give you more time to scope out the area and plan your attack. For another thing, it will also preserve more of the weapons and money that you came to steal, so you will get more loot from this mission. Finally, sending Lenny will also affect the story and the relationship between Arthur and Lenny. Lenny will be impressed that you trusted him to handle the situation, and he will say that you always have his back. This will make Arthur feel proud and compliment Lenny, saying that he is a smart and brave young man. Lenny will appreciate the praise, but he will also say that he still has a lot to learn from Arthur. This will show that Lenny is growing more loyal and respectful, but also that he feels a bit insecure and dependent on Arthur. So, which option is the best possible choice? Well, in my opinion, I think sending Lenny is more fun and challenging. Shooting the dynamite is too easy and predictable. Sending Lenny adds more suspense and excitement to the mission, as you have to watch out for Lenny's safety and decide when to strike. It also gives you more options and flexibility, as you can either blow up the dynamite or snipe the raiders. Shooting the dynamite reduces the amount of loot that you can get from this mission. Sending Lenny preserves more of the loot, which means more money and weapons for you. It also gives you more satisfaction, as you can see Lenny's clever and courageous performance and feel proud of him. Shooting the dynamite damages the relationship between Arthur and Lenny. Sending Lenny strengthens the relationship between Arthur and Lenny. It also shows more character development and growth for both of them, as they learn to trust and respect each other more. So, there you have it. That's why I think that sending Lenny is the best possible choice in this mission. Next is one of the main missions in Chapter 3 called Sodom. Back to Gomorrah, where you have to rob a bank in Valentine with Bill, Lenny, and Karen. Before you enter the bank, you have to choose Karen's routine, harlot or lost little girl. This choice will affect how the bank robbery goes and what consequences you will face later on. So, which one is the best choice? If you choose this, Karen will pretend to be a drunk prostitute who wants to have some fun with the bank manager. She will distract him and the other guards and then surprise them with a gun. This will give you an opening to storm the bank and force the teller to open the vault. The advantage of this option is that it's faster and more straightforward. You don't have to wait for Karen to lure the manager away, and you can get to the vault quicker. The disadvantage is that it's louder and more violent. You will have to shoot your way out of the bank and face more resistance from the lawman who will chase you. Now let's look at the lost little girl option. 
If you choose this, Karen will act like a naive and innocent girl who is looking for her uncle. She will ask the bank manager for help, and he will take her to his office. The advantage of this option is that it's quieter and more stealthy. So, which one is the best choice? Well, in my opinion, the harlot option is the best choice. Why? Because it's more fun and exciting. I mean, come on. This is a game about outlaws and gunslingers. You want to rob a bank in style, not in stealth. You want to feel the adrenaline rush of shooting your way out of a sticky situation, not the boredom of waiting for a lock to open. Plus, you get more money if you loot all the safes, which is easier to do with the harlot option. Next is continuation. Whether to crack the safes or blow them up in the bank robbery mission. After Karen distracts the bank workers and patrons, you have to force the teller to open the vault. Inside the vault, you will find four safes that contain money and valuables. You have two options to open them. You can either crack them by rotating the lock and listening for the clicks, or you can blow them up with dynamite. First of all, let's talk about the money. Cracking the safes will result in a higher amount of money obtained, as you will be able to loot all four safes without damaging the contents. Second, let's talk about the difficulty. Cracking the safes will require some skill and patience, as you have to rotate the lock slowly and carefully, and listen for the clicks that indicate the correct numbers. This can be tricky and time-consuming, especially if you are not used to it. Blowing up the safes will require less skill and patience, as you just have to place the dynamite on the safe, light the fuse, and step back. This can be easier and faster, especially if you are in a hurry. Also, cracking the safes will result in a more stealthy approach, as you will not alert the lawman outside the bank until you leave the vault. This will give you more time to loot the safes and escape the bank without being shot at. Blowing up the safes will result in a less stealthy approach, as you will alert the lawman outside the bank as soon as the first explosion goes off. This will give you less time to loot the safes and escape the bank, as you will have to deal with the gunfire and the reinforcements. But most importantly, let's talk about the fun. Cracking the safes will result in a more realistic and immersive experience, as you will feel like a professional safecracker who knows how to open any lock. This will also add some tension and suspense to the mission, as you will wonder if you can crack all the safes before the lawmen arrive. Blowing up the safes will result in a more action-packed and explosive experience, as you will feel like a reckless outlaw who doesn't care about the consequences. This will also add some excitement and thrill to the mission, as you will enjoy the chaos and the destruction. So, which option is better? Well, in my opinion, the best possible choice is to crack the safes. Why? Because it gives you more money, more stealth, and more realism. Next mission, help Mary or don't help Mary too. As you know, Mary is Arthur's former lover who left him because of his outlaw lifestyle. She reappears in the game several times, asking for Arthur's help with her family problems. The first time she asks Arthur to help her find her brother Jamie, who has joined a cult called the Colonians. The second time she asks Arthur to help her rescue her father from some debt collectors. The question is, should you help Mary or not? What are the consequences of your choice? And what will give you a better experience in the game? C. Helping Mary find her brother Jamie. If you agree to help Mary, you will have to chase Jamie on horseback and stop him from killing himself. You will then return him to Mary and have a chance to talk to her and even propose to her. However, she will reject your offer, saying that she can't leave her family and that you can't leave your gang. You will part ways, but you will get a gold ring from her as a token of her affection. If you decline to help Mary, you will end the quest right there. You will exchange some polite words with her and say goodbye. You will not get the ring, and you will not see her again until much later in the game. The second request, helping Mary rescue her father from some debt collectors. This request only happens if you helped Mary with her brother. If you agree to help Mary again, you will have to sneak into a stable and steal her father's brooch, which he pawned to pay off his debts. You will then confront the debt collectors and fight them off. So, what are the consequences of helping or not helping Mary? Well, the main consequence is how it affects Arthur's character development and his relationship with Mary. If you help Mary, you will show that Arthur still cares for her and that he is willing to risk his life for her. You will also get some items from her that will have a role in the epilogue. However, you will also face the frustration of not being able to be with her and the sadness of knowing that she will never leave her family for you. If you don't help Mary, you will show that Arthur has moved on from her and that he is focused on his own survival and his loyalty to his gang. You will also avoid the emotional pain of being rejected by her and the guilt of leaving her in trouble. 
However, you will also miss out on some of the most touching and romantic scenes in the game, and the chance to see a different side of Arthur. So, what will give you a better experience in the game? Well, that depends on how you want to play Arthur, and what kind of story you want to see. If you want to play Arthur as a more compassionate and romantic character, who still has some hope for a better life, then you should help Mary. You will get to see some of the most beautiful and heartbreaking moments in the game, and you will feel more connected to Mary and her story. If you want to play Arthur as a more hardened and pragmatic character, who has accepted his fate and his role as an outlaw, then you should not help Mary. You will get to see some of the more realistic and gritty aspects of the game, and you will feel more loyal to your gang and your cause. So, what is my verdict? Which is the best choice? Well, in my opinion the best choice is to help Mary. I think that it adds more depth and emotion to the game, and that it makes Arthur a more interesting and complex character. I also think that it makes the game more memorable and impactful, especially in the later chapters in the epilogue. I don't mind the frustration and the sadness that come with helping Mary, because I think that they make the game more realistic and immersive. Next choice is whether to kill or spare Anthony Foreman, the leader of the Foreman Brothers gang. Anthony Foreman is a minor antagonist who appears in two missions, No No and Thrice No and The Course of True Love the Four. He is also a bounty target in the epilogue. He has a history with Tilly Jackson, a member of the Vander Lynn gang, who used to be part of his gang until she killed his cousin in self-defense. Foreman holds a grudge against Tilly and kidnaps her in the mission No No and Thrice No. In this mission, you play as Arthur Morgan and rescue Tilly from Foreman's hideout with the help of Susan Grimshaw. After a shootout, you chase down Foreman on horseback and lasso him. You then have the option to kill him or spare him. Tilly suggests that you let him go while Susan urges you to kill him. The choice is up to you, but it will have some consequences later in the game. If you kill Foreman, you will lose some honor, and Arthur will stab him in the stomach, saying, Sorry, partner. We can't take no chances with the likes of you. This will end Foreman's story and prevent him from appearing again in the game. If you spare Foreman, you will gain some honor, and Arthur will say, You're lucky we're all such softies. Foreman will thank you and promise to leave Tilly alone, but he will also warn you that he will come after you if he sees you again. This will not end Foreman's story, as he will reappear in the epilogue as a bounty target for John Marston. In the epilogue, you can find Foreman's wanted poster in St. Dennis. He is wanted for robbery and murder. You can track him down to a saloon, where he will recognize you as a former member of the Vander Lind gang. He will try to escape with his men, and you will have to chase him through the streets. You can either capture him alive, or kill him. If you capture him alive, you will get a reward of $85 and some dialogue with him on the way to the sheriff's office. He will mention Arthur and Tilly, and express his regret for his actions. So, which choice is better? Kill or spare Foreman? I think sparing Foreman is the better choice, because you still gets to destroy him later in the game. So that's it for today. We are so done with the second part, but there's still one left, and if you don't want to miss that out, subscribe. I'll see you next time.